Good evening. I'm Pastor Vance Mortensen from the Racket Lake Chapel in Racket Lake, New York. And welcome to our virtual community tonight for an evening prayer. Uh, tonight, we will be using what is called the Laura Missal, which was a, an 8th century piece of writing in Ireland. And this missal has been modified a little bit for tonight, but in those days, it was used to come between a reading of scripture in a church service. That's the Laura Missal, if you want to look it up. It's L-O-R-R-H-A. Also tonight, uh, we will be looking at Psalm 8. And we'll listen to commentary from a Mr. Foster, who has written a very nice book. Or, In fact, it was years ago that he wrote the book. But it's a very nice book with commentary about the Psalms. So again, thank you for joining me tonight. We're going to start with our litany, and after my invitatory sentences, please respond with me, Lord, have mercy. Let us all pray to the Lord with all our heart and mind, to the Lord who looks over earth and makes it tremble. Let us pray, Lord, have mercy. For blessed peace and most tranquil times for us, for the Holy Church to extend from our borders to the end of the earth, let us pray, Lord, have mercy. For our pastors, our teachers, our servants, and all leaders in our church, let us pray, Lord, have mercy. For this place and the time and those who are participating with us tonight, for faithful leaders, for all who serve and defend our land, let us pray, Lord, have mercy. For those who dedicate themselves to the Lord's service, for the needy, for widows and orphans, let us pray, Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, sea, and air, for those striving to live lives of repentance, for those instructed in the Christian faith, let us pray, Lord, have mercy. We'll take a moment now and listen to Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. You have exalted your majesty above the heavens. From the mouths of babes and sucklings, you have given forth praise. Because of your adversaries to silence the enemy and the vengeful foe. When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have made, I wonder what is humankind that you are mindful of them? the Son of Man, that you gave a thought to them. And yet you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned all of humankind with glory and honor. You have put all things under control, sheep and oxen, all of them, and the wild beasts too, the birds of the air and the fishes of the sea. And whatsoever passes along the paths of the sea, O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. The psalm has sometimes been called a, a song of order or a song of orientation in that this expresses the feeling that humans are a part of the universe and it's acknowledged that they accept where they are. Let's listen to some of Mr. Foster's comments. Paradoxically, it is the thought of human's insignificance in the world of God's creation that leaves on to a striking declaration of humankind's real greatness. We are taught by the brilliance of the eastern sky at night, resplendent with its myriad of stars, how wonderful the creator of it must be. The name of God acclaimed at the beginning of the psalm is really a Hebrew way of speaking God's own nature, goodness, excellence, as made known to us by God's actions and providence. 
To praise God's name is to acknowledge his greatness and return thanks for God's goodness. Enlightened by our study of the heavens, we are urged to acclaim the wisdom and excellence of God. It is a glory which even the feeblest of God's creatures, the babes and sucklings, can see and praise, a fact which rebukes those who remain indifferent to God. In the face of such wonders, how strange it is. The psalm continues that God should bestow thought on humankind, so frail and insignificant in the universe. But the very thought of humankind's seeming insignificance serves to throw into contrast humans' seeming greatness. Is humankind not made but a little lower than the angels? The psalm might have also proclaimed a little lower than God. Do humans not possess those unique powers and intellect which will make them like God himself? Stirred by this initial thought of humankind's uniqueness and power, this psalm urges us anew to use our God-given faculties for the praise and the worship of their creator. You may be familiar with the hymn that is based on this, but we'll close with those famous lines at the beginning of this psalm and the end of the psalm. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. May it be so. Amen. Let's continue now with our litany. And if you would respond with me after the invitatory sentences, with Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bear fruits of mercy in Christ's holy church, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may live in the Christian faith and die in peace, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's kingdom may remain among us, that his will be done among us in the holy bonds of charity, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. To preserve the Christian faith among us in all holiness and purity, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, cleanse us from all our sins and restore us in your sight. Graciously hear our prayers tonight and receive our praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you to offer your own prayers of praise, thanksgiving, or petition, silently or aloud. We pray for the people involved in the war in the Ukraine. We pray for all of our friends and family members who are fighting cancer. We give praise to you, God, for the safety of the Craig family, who is now out of Russia. And now, please join me in the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, in a version that is most familiar to you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom now and forever. Amen. In closing, our prayer is one of my favorite prayers from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. 
soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, all for your love's name's sake. Amen. Thank you once again for joining our community tonight for evening prayer. May you have a blessed evening. Good night.